The Egyptians on the east bank of the canal were split into two armies, one in the north and one in the south. A hundred thousand men and about a thousand tanks, well dug in and well defended by minefields. They looked impregnable. But one of Sharon's patrols had discovered a narrow gap, just one mile wide, between the two armies at this spot, where the Suez Canal joined a large salt lake. Sharon was ordered to push through here with his tanks, widen the gap, and secure a corridor through to the canal. The Israelis would bridge the canal, and hundreds of tanks would then pour across it and fan out north and south to cut off the Egyptians from behind. The Egyptians' positions on the eastern canal bank would then be untenable. For the Israelis, the whole operation would be fraught with danger. The biggest threat was an Egyptian stronghold here, called Chinese Farm. It was just north of the planned Israeli corridor. Sharon had to neutralize the Egyptians at Chinese Farm if the Israeli plan was to succeed. But what the Israelis didn't know was just how big the Egyptian presence was at Chinese Farm. Large numbers of Egyptian tanks and infantry were gathered there. Unaware of how outnumbered they were, at dusk on October the 15th, the Israeli assault force moved in. Sharon's tank crews approached Chinese farm to make their surprise attack. They moved in from three different directions, but the Egyptian position was a lot stronger than the Israelis had expected. A ferocious night battle erupted between the Israelis and the Egyptians. Both sides now faced the same problem. The fighting was at such close quarters that it was difficult to tell who was friend and who was foe. Sharon decided to cross the canal before waiting for the Battle of Chinese Farm to be won. At midnight, he sent 750 paratroopers to sneak across and establish the vital toehold on the West Bank. His men had been totally unopposed. But to turn this into a major breakthrough, the Israelis would need to get thousands more men and tanks across the canal. In fact, the Israelis had built a mobile bridge a year before the war for just this purpose. The bridge was 180 meters long, weighed 400 tons, and took three days to put together. Once assembled, it was towed on metal rollers through the desert by 12 tanks, along the only road down to the canal. Sharon needed to get tanks across the canal to reinforce his troops who'd crossed earlier. Without the bridge in place, he had to float 50 tanks across on inflatable rafts. The sudden appearance of Israeli tanks on the west bank of the canal was a huge surprise for the Egyptians.